Hey everyone, this is Corey with Casual EDC, and I'm going to be giving you my full review of the Pena Knives X Series Front Flipper Trapper. Now, this is Enrique Pena's first X Series design that was released. He's released several since. Uh, I don't have a number off the top of my head, but he has released a Lanny's Clip, a Barlow, a Swayback, a Zulu, the Trapper, um, Apache, Raptor. There's also been two versions of the Mula, quite a few different X-Series knives at this point, as well as two iterations of a fixed blade. But this was the first one that he launched through Rayot, and this is what we're going to be taking a look at today. So, looking at an overall length of 6.5 inches with a 2.75 inch blade stock, as I said, made by Rayot. This is M390 steel, blade thickness of 0.12 inches so you can see the stock there pretty standard stock looking down at this area of the blade pretty standard for most knives that classic clip point blade that you'd see on a modern or sorry a traditional trapper this being more of a modern traditional knife a 3.75 inch handle with a handle width of three quarters of an inch Bring in our, sorry, a handle thickness of 0.52 inches, a handle width of three quarters of an inch. Bring in our size comparisons here so those numbers can be a little bit more relevant for you. We have the Benchmade Bugout on top and the 84 millimeter Victorinox Cadet here on the bottom. Uh, neither uh, the Benchmade Bugout or the Painted Trapper are big knives, and you can see that in this comparison here uh, relatively small all things considered uh, blade length under under three inches and whatnot uh, so something to keep in mind if you are interested in one of these these are uh, titanium bolsters and titanium liners it's almost like a frame lock it's a bolster lock so you have this scale material of this in this case natural micarta over top and the lock running underneath right here so when the blades open you can see the lock bar right in this area so functioning just like a frame lock but has some scales over top so it's a bolster lock titanium pocket clip not deep carry on this or anything like that so you're gonna have you know from here up or so sticking out of the pocket no big deal i never found it to be too distracting or annoying uh, front flipper opening mechanism as well as a nail nick on here so if you did want to pinch it open you can do that you can get a nail in there but it's not really needed the detent on these is not crazy strong you're not going to shake it out or anything but you know it doesn't take a fingernail to pull it out that's for sure titanium backspacer let's uh let's talk about the action first uh this flips really really nicely um i've had several x-series knives a long time ago, I did a review of the Swayback, which was the first of the X-Series knives that I got a chance to handle. And that had really good action as well. But this handle design, where the clip is located, allows you to really pinch it and pull it into your palm and brace it against this area of your thumb and pull the pointer finger back to get that blade to flip out. That's something that was also easy to do on the Zulu, but I did struggle to do with on a the Barlow model. And I don't think I had an easy time doing that on the Swayback either, due to that handle pushing the opposite direction, essentially being this shape with the blade coming out the other side for the Swayback. And of course, flips with the thumb very well. Lockup's nice and good. These ride on bearings, so it drops shut nice and easy. Like I said, the smoothest I've handled for sure, but all of them do drop shut with a little bit of wiggle and they definitely fall onto your thumb with just a push of the lock. Talking about the things that I also like about this knife before I get into the things I don't like, uh, it fits the hand really nice. It's small, don't get me wrong, but you can get three and a half, maybe four fingers on here depending on your hand size. I wear a large size glove, but my hands are actually rather small. So, I could easily do with three fingers on this and have the pinky just kind of hanging off or I can move my fingers up, keep them together and then get all four fingers on there. A little bit of jimping here on the spine. Makes it nice, locks your hand in with no problem. Uh, it's comfortable in the left hand as well. 
not quite as comfortable due to this bolster lock here, but not bad, uh, especially if you wanted to carry it without the clip. That is always an option to take this clip off. Uh, I don't think the screws are the correct length without the clip, but I'm sure something could be done about that to remedy that situation. But yeah, carries nicely and it cuts okay. Uh, that's gonna be my first little knock on this is that despite being M390 being a good steel, 0.12 inches for your blade stock and this might actually be 0.125. Uh, it doesn't list any further on Blade HQ and I don't know if my calipers go to that decimal place. But let's find out. I think they do. Nope, they're only uh, two places. Yeah, 0 0.12 is what I'm getting on the calipers. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can, but it does not uh, does not change the result there. Coming reading off of Blade HQ site. But because it's such a small blade and the blade's not very wide. This grind is not, uh, it's not that long. It's not that wide, so it doesn't have a chance to really thin out. You are looking at a, sorry, I'm looking for the grind here. I do believe that this is a flat grind. Yes, a flat grind. Um, I think something like this would have really benefited from a hollow grind to thin that edge out even further. Hopefully, maybe we can get some focus here where you can see how thin this is behind the edge. So it's pretty thin. I don't know if you'll be able to see or not. Hopefully you can. But the flat grind, just looking at the blade here, it gets thick pretty quick. Uh, even though the initial edge is thin, you get up to that full blade thickness in a matter of three quarters of an inch, if I had to guess. I'll get the calipers back out here. Uh, you would think I just got these by the way I'm using them today. But, um, 0.47 inches, so you are looking at about half an inch of grind there before you reach the full thickness of the blade stock. Whereas on some other popular knives in the smaller size, like the Benchmade Bugout being just slightly larger, uh, you have much more grind before you reach that full thickness all the way back where my finger is here. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, if they ever do a second run of these, I really hope they do a hollow grind. That might convince me to buy another one, honestly. That's one of the reasons why I'm going to be selling this knife. Uh, that's my biggest knock on it, for sure, is definitely that grind because it does carry nicely it has good action uh, i really like the aesthetics of it i am one who really likes the modern traditional look i have some slip joints here uh, bench made proper as well as a cody utzler custom slip joint both on the small side both modern traditional knives using titanium and micarta and this using a combination of those two materials I really enjoy this aesthetic. Uh, it's something that I've always really kind of liked the look of, but I really also like modern materials and opening mechanisms and locks so I can use things one-handed, which is where the Peña knives are really nice. Um, I haven't found a Peña that has really done it for me yet. This trapper certainly stuck around for the longest amount of time. The Swayback had a good little run with me as well. but. I'm looking forward to other stuff that Pena does, hopefully another run of these in the future, but until they thin out that blade a little bit, I can't see myself keeping this uh, or buying more. These are $274. It's essentially a titanium frame lock with some micarta scales coming out of Rayot with M390, so it's well built and it's made in a good factory and you know you're getting a good product but it's expensive. And if I'm gonna dish out that kind of money, it's one of those things where I say, do I just wait? Uh, if I try three more, if I try three more X-Series knives, I could have bought a custom off of Enrique Pena. That's kind of what it comes down to for me, is do I wanna buy these $274 versions of the knives, or do I find one that I really like, that I get a custom version made of, 
either, I mean, getting on the books is always a difficult thing, but do I find a custom available in that price range and go for something like that? Or do I go with an X-Series? Now, I don't know value-wise if it's worth the money to go for a custom, especially if you find an X-Series you really like, because that Rayot build quality is great. But that's just kind of where my brain goes for this. Uh, certainly, it's more economical to go the Rayot route. Be saving yourself five hundred plus dollars on a knife, which is always a good thing to save money. So that's always something to keep in mind. But that's my internal struggle when it comes to these, because, like I said, I have not found one that I've fallen in love with yet. Though I love the aesthetic, uh, I had a Barlow I really thought I was going to enjoy, but the action wasn't as good. The bolster was longer. The bolster came down to around where the screw is, which meant the lock was longer, which meant it was kind of, it was easier to disengage, but something about it just wasn't feeling as smooth or as nice. And maybe if I gave it more time to break in, it would have been different, but I wasn't quite sure on it, wasn't sold on it, and rather would have kept this at the time. So take what you will from all that rambling uh, it's a good knife, it's just not a knife that I'm going to keep. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with the Pena X-Series knives. They're all really good knives, built by Rayot. I just wish they would thin the edges out more. I know some of them do have hollow grinds. I believe the Raptor and the Apache do. Uh, those are knives I'd be really interested in checking out and seeing how their performance is compared to something like the Trapper or even the Zulu. That's going to be it for me today, guys. I'm trying to keep this one hopefully nice and quick. Uh, just a little review and overview for you here. If you want one of these, uh, keep an eye out. I'm sure Trappers will be restocked somewhere, maybe a version 2 eventually. I know I got this from the second, I believe, second ever restock they did. And I think I got this from Knife Center or Knife Joy. They'd sometimes do Dama Steel versions of these, so always keep an eye out on retailers. Uh, Blade HQ gets some exclusives of these as well. If you are interested in picking some up, just keep your eye out there. Uh, Pena has a couple Facebook groups as well that will get announcements regarding those things. But that's going to be it today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, take care.